we still don't have an intro. We We're still- not going to have an intro until we make an intro. <laughs> Um, hey, everybody, what's up? You are about to get highly educated with the Cannabis Closet Podcast with Canna Queen and MJ. This is an adult content show with no limitations on actions, subject, language, words, all that stuff. Uh, opinions, views, and expressions may or may not be that of the hosts, their guests, their subsidiaries. Please note that we are not medical physicians, nor are we attorneys. So all of the information that we share is based solely on our personal research knowledge and the news that we find of the day. Thank you for rolling up and showing up. We hope you enjoy the show. What's up? What's up? What's up? Everybody, we have one of y'all in the in the guest in the guests uh, lounge right now. We have one of y'all, one of y'all from the comment section in the guest lounge right now because that's how we roll. That's how we, we roll. Learn, yeah, we want to learn something we know nothing about. I mean, nothing. happy four twenty, everybody. First and foremost, happy four twenty. Um, if you're in the comments, say hello. What's up? What's up? Wifey in the house. See, I told you. Queen. Queen support. cousin. So really excited about today's show because it's actually not even cannabis uh, leaning. It's 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 really about uh, what's up, Carrie. Um, it's really it's really about uh, we we found something that somebody is doing very interesting, and we we're like, let's talk about it. We want to know about it. So. Um, that's what Mondays are for around here. We have that uh, the shorter shows on Monday for an hour, and we like to just talk about whatever we want to talk about. So this is one of those days where we're going to do that. Real life. We're talking real life, uh, real talk, and, um, and and yeah, what other other people do to to get yeah. through, get get through the daily grind. What right? puts a smile on your face? That's what we're going to talk about today. Um, and I'm super excited. Um, we, we have little Bobby Customs in the house. If you guys um, follow us regularly, you know that he's always in the comments. Super hella supporter of us. Uh, we uh, were really interested in what he does. And so we invited him on the show to talk about it. And so we're going to learn all about it today. So, <laughs> so excited. Wow, everyone. Um, thanks for being here. And yeah. uh, if you're in the co- yeah. You know, Tell us you're here. Uh, we can't tell you, you know, we can't see you or, or who you are. So you got to drop a hello and show your support. And thanks for being here. Absolutely. And um, if you have any questions um, during the show, please uh, definitely ask those questions because I'm sure that our guests will be really happy to answer them. But um, before we get to that, let's get into a couple of the, you know, take care of business things that we do. Um, should we just start with first things first? I was, I was fixing this meme, this meme up, but it's not, I, I can't, I didn't finish fixing it up. Um, so I guess I could just put it in here. Yeah. I think you can just post the image. Yeah. Or share your screen. So let me pull the image up real quick. Hold on just a second. I am, I do have a reason to be upset today. Um, and every day. <laughs> so for new for new people joining us, um, we do a little segment. Why is Canna Queen mad today? And then we kind of hash it out. You know, there's yeah. always something for us to. Uh, you want to get off our chests, and so this is the corner for us to do that. And and uh, and so um, today, what's up, what's up, Libby? What's up? Uh, mom in law um, is here too. Look at you. All right. I love it. Yay. I'm going to push and this down for a second. I know I'm still here. Um, <laughs> I just have to find this. I just took a screenshot of this thing. There it is. Okay. So let me just pull that up. Okay. And let's see if I can share this with y'all. Okay. So, um, I am kind of irritated because this is, this is something that is, that is always happening. That is always the thing. Um, but here's why I'm mad today. So can you guys see that? Can you see that? Yes. Yes. Okay. So what that says is, um, In every 0.41 hours, someone in Pennsylvania 
is arrested for having marijuana. That's what that says. That's what that says. So I just want the reason um, that that's so infuriating is because why? Because Pennsylvania is a medicinally legal state. So we're wasting taxpayer resources on still putting people in jail while white men profit in your state. It's not illegal. And, to sell and that's it. what you and, and and that's what was voted in. So that's a uh, that's where you know where we say vote legalization. Um, but then the follow up and what happens is that there's no representation, uh, and then um, and laws are still being created that keep money going into prison systems, which is a money maker. It is it is a money maker. And it, 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 it continues to make us mad as we continue to see the industry grow and the, the billions of dollars made and mur, 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 and look at this out of state. every state. And then it's like, what are, what's it going to? Is it improving my state? Is it improving my, you know, the prison system? You know, like getting a pay, you know, prisoners of this nope. out of, you know, nope, it is it's not. It's putting and, people uh, of color in is, jail. It is, it is going back into uh, ripping families pocket. apart. Yep. And ripping families apart. It's its absolutely asinine. And here's what's even crazier about that little statistic is that Pennsylvania is having a discussion right now about legalizing adult use cannabis. Well, how can you have that discussion and still be putting people in jail for it? But And this is state by state. This is going to continue state by state. Yep. And this is, you know, and um, and it's interesting to, you know, get a percentage on that and, uh, you know, we should be blasting every single state, every that legal state that still has um, arrest for for cannabis possessions. This yeah, is ridiculous. Should. It's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, you know, if you are now, if <laughs> so, um, yeah. And so what that's... do we do? So what? What do you do? What do we? What do we do about it? Make sure you know who you, who's representing you. Yes. Um, what they're really talking about, and make them stand up on you know for that platform. If they're using this as a platform, make sure that they're um, being heard by you. Uh, that you want it to be done. You know, um, we've got some great friends in Missouri that do exactly that. They show up at the state, you know, on the state floor. They, uh, you know, they are there and present. Um, and so. Um, what? I'm sorry. <laughs> what? Wow. Um. Wow. And so these are the other what? things. This is crazy. Um. What is that? In Missouri, fire and police responded to a house fire and then arrested the homeowners for marijuana possession. Granted, they did have a lot of plants, but still, it doesn't seem right. No, it doesn't seem right at all. It doesn't matter. I don't give a fuck. Honestly, the the only reason the state gives a fuck is because of money, right? I don't give a fuck how many plants they had in their basement. I don't. I don't care. Because literally- What is it doing? It's not doing anything wrong. It's, uh, it's, to... You know what it's doing? It's competing with the legal industry is what it's doing. And oh, that's why that's they're right. mad. That's why they're and, mad. And what this does is it, again, it puts uh, you know, money into a system that you know, now these, uh, these people have to hire lawyers. They have to fight for their rights. They have to pay court costs. They have to pay- uh, fees to get out. They'll be um, under probation, so they can't use cannabis. They can't. They won't <laughs> be able to use cannabis. So um, these are all things we talk about on the show, and this is a prime example of why we have guys. to stand up for caregiver rights, make an understanding of you, and and I think it's there's also education for you know, for us as patients, as us as uh, citizens, you know, that have legalization. What are we allowed to do? What are we all not? And and you know, beyond I'm that, tell you. It's, it's, you are an adult and you can. In each and every state, listen to my words. If y'all want to diminish and disable and dismantle the underground market, then what you're going to need to do is make cannabis accessible. Which means hey, affordable. That Which means, means it's affordable. not tax money on that tax money on tax money. Means- that also means we're not talking about like like ditch weed of 
and, and then and then now we can make it affordable. I'm talking about you provide the good stuff at an affordable price. And then we can talk about how you actually do want to dismantle and disable the underground market. Because really, you don't want to do that because the underground market, what else does it fund for you? Your prison system? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. So. Yep. And we can't make good medicine if we don't have good plants. Uh, uh, amen uh, to that. It is, is, is really what it boils down to. Amen um, to that. I'm going to, I, since it isn't only an hour show, I'm going to keep us moving. And uh, um, um, that, this is a, you know, we're going to continue. That's always something we talk about. It's always something that make us, makes us angry. Stand up for your rights, people. Absolutely. And know what you're voting for. Like actually read it. For. Don't take somebody else's word for it that this is what it says, because honestly, that's what happened in Missouri. But since we're talking about Missouri, since since it's a little bit of a segue into Missouri, um, I do have, uh, what did I see that? Let me see, hold on, let me pull that up. I thought I had it pulled up. Um, I have something on Missouri. So there are, have been expungements in Missouri um, and also in Rhode Island. So, whatever that's worth. Uh, Rhode Island to start is beginning, uh, the courts are beginning the process of erasing marijuana records. They're erasing them. Um, They started last week. Uh, Justice Paul A. Suttle, uh, Supreme Court Justice in uh, Rhode Island, uh, issued an executive order last week directing the superior and um, district courts uh, to begin reviewing and expunging records of tens of thousands of Rhode Islanders with marijuana related criminal convictions under the plan, all eligible convictions will be removed from public review sealed by no later than July 1st of 2024. And those seeking to expedite expungements can uh, submit a request to the court. So if they're trying to get a job or something like that, they can um, expedite that. At an estimated um, 30,000 Rhode Islanders are estimated to be eligible to have their criminal records cleared. Hundreds of thousands of Americans unduly carry the burden and stigma of a past conviction for behavior that most Americans and a growing number of states no longer consider a crime. Uh, this is from Director Paul Ar- Armand. Tano, I can never say his name right. He's the deputy director um, of Normal. Our sense of justice and our principles of fairness demand that public officials and courts move swiftly to right the past wrongs of cannabis prohibition and criminalization. Um, so with that, other states are doing this as well. Earlier this month, Missouri courts moved to erase 3,500 marijuana-related convictions. I want you to look at the numbers here. <laughs> we got 30,000 and then we got 3,000. Um, but still, that's 3,000 people start. that are, are going start. to have their records expunged. Um, many, if not most of them, have had to apply and get help with applications to get that done. So most of it was not automatic, but some of it may have been. Um, and let's see, the courts will ultimately expunge, uh, they say some 100,000 convictions. They say some 100,000 convictions, which means it's not probably that number, but somewhere in the ball ballpark, maybe, uh, within the coming months. And then Connecticut has also announced that they erased, um, 42,964 cannabis convictions on January 1st. So they just did it. They said, hey, get rid of these. Right, right. So who's doing it better? Uh, right, right. Um, sorry, you got to get to you got to get those numbers up. But you have you have a you have a goal. So let's let's try to reach that. Um, to date, 24 states have enacted laws providing explicit pathways to either expunge or set aside the records of those with low level cannabis convictions. If you guys want to read more about what's going on with that, um, Normal has a couple of stories out there um, about uh, what states are doing, has a little bit more detail than we went into today, because that's not what this show is about today. But I wanted to cover that. Um, and then there was one other thing that I wanted to um, to talk about before we get to our guests. And that is a Colorado issue. The Colorado Department of Revenue Um, in conjunction with the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment, is issuing a health and safety advisory due to the identification of potentially unsafe levels of total yeast and mold uh, and aspergillus contaminated uh, contamination in regulated marijuana flour. That's bud shake trim produced by 
Physician Preferred Products. That's uh, doing business as Docs Apothecary, if you can hear my voice in Colorado. Um, the CDPHE and the DOR deem it a threat to public health and safety when marijuana is found to have total yeast and mold and aspergillus levels above acceptable limits established by the Colorado Marijuana Rule 4-115. Um, so through the investigation, uh, the department has identified harvest batches by the company that contain levels of contaminants above acceptable limits for those contaminants. Uh, packages uh, from the contaminated harvest batches were sold between uh, March 4th of 2022 and September 22nd of 2022. Um, if if you were a purchaser of that, uh, I don't imagine you still have any left, but you can contact Docs Apothecaries for uh, a recall. Uh, additionally, the they identified batches that were created from um, the beginning of January, 1-1 January 2020 to 9-21-2022 that were improperly submitted. Um, there is uh, eight pages to this document and seven of those pages are batch numbers. I'm sorry, six and a half of those pages are batch mm -hmm. numbers of recalled product. Um, so uh, this, you know, in my opinion, this is a product of trying to rush stuff to the shelves to try it. You're yeah. not taking care of your growth. Like I yeah. said, you know, we said before, if we can't have a good plant, we can't have good medicine. If you're, you know, the, the supply and demand is really, um, it's ugly uh, yeah. in terms of what will be put out uh, because of this industry. Um we are, I, I'm, I'm excited. I wish I was making, I wish, wish I was I know, I wish I had some working on an RC. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, talking. but <laughs> <laughs> um, um, what I want to say about the one last thing about that last uh, little uh, blip was that the um, company itself is doing its due diligence and doing voluntary recalls on the product that is unsafe. So that's, that's, you know, that's something. That's all they can do, um, and to you know, to say you know, hey, we're we're aware now, and and we're gonna right. you know, make it right. Um, I don't understand why product is released out onto the floor before the testing results are back. I thought that that was the whole reason why we tested, That's and I. Reason. And so whether these reports come out, you know, what is the, where is this, the gap? There could time? be also, there, there also could be other, other things that could happen. So, so this sounds like, yeah, they got, they got testing back or is improperly, there's an imp impropriety done. Um, but sometimes like, I, you know, if you're not getting rid of that flower fast enough and then you're not storing it properly, you are in danger of contaminating that flower after the fact. So got you guys at dispensaries and uh, and in house in the cultivation where you store do storage. Make sure you're following your protocol and doing everything right because we don't want to contaminate flour that is seemingly supposed to be healthy according to the test results. Um, but also we want to make sure that we get those test results back before rushing it out, like you said, onto the floor because we don't know. We don't know. We had a um, we had a cultivation that would send us flour that wasn't fully cured. So then when we would get it, and this is Ooh, also, by the way, game. Yeah. that would, that would really mess with our weights, but also it puts you in danger of like contaminating the flour because it's still moist. And you're it, packing it into bags, packing, the way it's, that it's, it's stored. Oh, right. No, it's, and know, then we didn't yeah. even have testing. We still we need to even, get the show even, on for a cure conversation. Yeah. And we didn't, yes, testing, testing is a, and so that's the other thing is there how many testing facilities are available for all of the thousands of, uh, you know, licenses that are issued in different states? Um, I, that, that also, and what are the regulations on testing sites? <laughs> um, they need checks and balances on every, on, on all processes. Right. And so and it can't just be the law enforcement that don't know anything about cannabis too. It can't just be them. Right. And so there's got to be uh, representatives out there for this, right? This is a conversation yeah. we haven't actually brought up, but maybe we should put that on our list of, uh, you, know, test, you know, testing Definitely. facilities and, and, uh, and, and such. So actually um, I have a couple friends that, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely reach out to a few people, but let's, uh, let's get this party started. I'm ready. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. We we can do our uh, ads at the end of the show. Oh well, right before the would yeah, you rather's let's, or yeah, let's yeah. do let's do the ads later. This show is brought to you by Queen Kitty Seltzer as always, but we'll we'll do those ads later. Put pop this kitty put in your mouth. But um, listen, we want to bring our guest on because we've had him sitting waiting in the in the little guest lounge. Uh, but yeah, and y'all are ready. Do. Y'all are y'all here, are excited. I know. Uh, <laughs> all, all, all your rowdy friends showed up. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us. This is, uh, you know, this is exciting um, to have Lil Bobby Customs in the house. Lil Bobby Customs. So, do, can you introduce yourself to our audience that you're not a part of today, which is weird. It's a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. I'm Derek. That's my real name. Little Bobby Customs is basically started with a little skeleton guy. I'll actually pan down so you guys can see him. That's Little yeah. Bobby. Hey, hey, Little Bobby. Yeah. So it, it just became, it was a Halloween prop. It looked like the right size to fit in an RC truck for the scale and everything. And I was like, oh, I'll pick him up. And then I started taking him out to the crawl spot with me and he became, and his name was Little Bobby. And then it just blew up from there. Everybody nice. liked him. He, he's a he's the face of the company and the partier. I'm the guy that does all the work. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> so. a little balance in that life, so it's cool. Yeah. So, 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 um, well, you have the list of questions on the thing, and I just have them in my brain. Yeah, um, I mean, <laughs> ta- tell us what is crawling crawlers. Uh, yeah, we we were like, what is the the tell us all of RC's uh, size scale. What I want to know. Yeah. Where well, first tell us how how you started. And then tell us what it is that you do. Okay. So in the early, early 80s, so now I'm dating myself, um, I got into all your toy grade RCs. Like you could get into at the, the toy stores, you know? Yeah. But before that, it started with Hot Wheels and Legos. Playing with Hot Wheels, building with Legos. Well, then I got these hobby or these toy grade RCs and they would break. And most of the time, those you can't really fix. Well, I would find somebody that, had the same one, trade them something for it, get it, and started figuring out how to fix them. Next thing you know, I get a hobby grade one that's in pieces in a box. I got a kit, a a manual and a box full of pieces. I was, that was about 87. I came home from school every day after school. So about every, (laughs) took me about three weeks to get it done. It wasn't quite right 100%. So the kid that I got it from, an older kid in the neighborhood, I had him help me get it all set up and figured out. And he just showed me what to do instead of just doing it for me. Mm -hmm. So I learned, okay. And through building it, I learned how to keep maintain it. I learned about building it. So it was a good process of learning, especially for a young kid. Uh, Something to do with your hands too. Like it's a good, it's good engagement for your, um, for your, um, your eyes, your (laughs) eyes, your, your hands, your brain, like that little tiny intricate details like that are really super important. um, Especially as we're growing up as children. And it teaches you, you know, how to use tools, basic tools. Mm -hmm. You don't need nothing special. It's not like working on a full size car where you have to have a whole toolbox full of tools, you know? Right maybe six, seven tools and you can yeah. do everything with it. You know, there is yeah. specialized tools that they make, but over the years I've found just how to figure it out myself. So right. I don't really need all that fancy tools. Just like with real cars, I don't need a bunch of fancy stuff and I can do a lot of work in my garage. But um, so the RC trucks, I've been through on-road cars, off-road cars, trucks, buggies, boats, all your stuff. I got into crawlers probably about 12 years ago. I seen a YouTube video and I was hooked. What's I'm a not crawler? actually. And what is a, so crawler? a crawler? So basically a crawler is like an off-road truck that you upgrade the suspension. You put better tires, you upgrade stuff on it to make it basically to where it'll climb up over rocks. It'll climb up over pretty much anything unless it tips over. Okay. 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 So I, I know what you're talking about now. I didn't know that. Yeah, there basically was- like you're kind of similar to like your mud bog trucks that they use to take them out in the mud holes and stuff but these are a little more built purpose built towards crawling up over rocks or up the side of hills doing like hill climb type thing in the one-to-one world well people started enjoying it so much and rc had evolved through so many different things these trucks or crawlers came out and about 
about 12, 14 years ago, somewhere in there, yeah, about 14, 15 years ago, but people had to build them. They had to buy pieces and yeah. of this truck and pieces from here and pieces and piece it together. So they had to like customize their. Yeah. Their, you couldn't their, just buy a crawler out of the, out of, off the shelf and take it out and crawl. You had to custom free build Freestyle style custom building. Okay. Well, cool. now flash wow. forward. Now they have them to where you can buy them to where it has everything, batteries, everything. You pull it out of the box, charge the battery, put it in the truck and put some batteries in a controller and drive it to where, to where you have, you buy a kit where it's in pieces and you have to completely build the truck. You have to put all the electronics in it. You got to paint the body. You know what I mean? And that's kind of what started with me too, was custom painting my own bodies. Okay. And nobody ever showed me. I just, the first RC car I bought that had a body that needed to be painted. They came, they come clear. And um, I painted it myself and it wasn't the best, but I was like, okay. And then from there, I just started painting more and more bodies of my own. I got big into drift cars, which in the one-to-one -one world, it's something that started in Japan and has influenced and spread all over the world. And um, I got into those pretty big for a couple of years, had probably 15 of them at one point. And then I got into the crawlers and kind of left that behind. And, so, um, so you built a business out of this? Not necessarily a business. It's more or just a, a side thing. Yes. Okay. For people that are local, you know, they they seen what I was doing with mine and my paint jobs and my trucks take a lot of abuse. I mean, I launch them off a 15 to 20 foot cliff on purpose. You know what I mean? And just minimal, to see what it'll do. <laughs> I do it for fun. Everybody yeah. laughs. Everybody gets a kick out of it. You know, um, there was one site that I posted that it's like a site for a specific truck that I have. And a lot of people on there didn't like it because it's a more high end truck. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people on there were really cheesed off. They, they called me all kind of names. Oh, no. The admin Why? Because you did in. something with your toy the way you wanted to? Well, not only did I do it, but the video, there was six people that all jumped off at the same time. So six RC trucks basically just got Oh, I think I saw this. that one. I saw and that one. it really upset people. They, like I said, they, they weren't happy about it. And I finally wow. just posted, I guess you guys just like looking at your truck sitting on a shelf huh. rather than enjoy driving them. And I, I was yeah. out. I was done. I don't go back on that page no more because. Yeah, it's not I mean, worth it my doesn't. Time. I think that's just people that don't have anything better to do with their life. Um, Daryl Edwards was curious what we're doing in here. We are um, talking about um, little crawler trucks and the community, and we're smoking, of course, um, as we do. Um, and so uh, I've been. I've been like really loving your content on your page. If you guys aren't following, it's little, it's L I L Lil underscore Bobby underscore customs. Um, there's a lot of really good content on there. So do you guys have like, are there like races and stuff that you guys do or. So with the still? crawlers, it's not really racing. It's more, they call it a comp short for competition. Yeah. And you basically, we take like tennis balls and cut them in half and you will use those as a uh, gate markers, basically across from each other uh -huh. at a set distance. And we'll set up, say, 20 of these and you have to drive your truck through them. And they're just randomly scattered up through the rocks, down through rocks, it's over like a all little, kind of stuff, uh, like a course, basically. Course. Yeah. OK. And, you know, we keep track of, you know, if you hit one of the tennis balls that that counts as a point against you. If your truck rolls over and you have to physically touch it with your hands and roll it back over, that counts as a point. And then okay. we also time your run. So when you get through the last mm -hmm. gate, your time stops. Then when we judge it, it goes by the points. And if, say, there's a tie in the points, then we go to the time. And whoever had the quickest time through there with the least amount of points is the winner. That's dope. Now, is this? Is this something y'all created or is this something that's done like in not like not nationally? This is done or worldwide. You, okay. This well, is done okay. worldwide. There's big national events. Um, <laughs> there's one we're going to in Williston, Florida next month in February called USTE okay. or Ultimate Scale Truck Challenge. So what this event is, is it's people that build custom RC trucks, but you build it to look like 
a truck you would see sitting in your driveway. So say okay. I had a, a Chevy cool. pickup truck, I could build an RC truck that looks almost identical to the truck I have sitting in the driveway. You know what I mean? Even down to painting it the same color, um, you know, s- Sometimes you can't get the same exact style of rims, but you can get pretty close. But these days with all the different companies making upgrades and aftermarket parts for these things, you can pretty much get just about any style of wheel that's in real life. Especially if you have like the aftermarket full size wheels on your truck. A lot of times there's companies that make the RC size, which is these are considered one tenth scale trucks. So roughly one tenth scale the size of a real truck, you know, okay. the, the model that it's modeled after. All right. Um, so you, like I said, there's a lot of different aftermarket parts. It's, it's, there's more than you could count. You know what I mean? It's a thing. You can, it's a whole thing. It's a, it's a, it becomes a, it starts as a hobby. Then it becomes an addiction. Then it becomes a lifestyle. And then it becomes, well, for me and a lot of the guys I got with, it becomes therapy. Nice. You know, everybody's got their things that they deal with. And everybody needs a release, an outlet. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of us, the RC trucks is that. We can go out. Nobody there judges us. Nobody, we don't judge each other. We accept everybody, men, women, children, doesn't matter who you are. As long as you come out there with respect for everybody else and treat them as you would want to be treated, we don't care who you are. It's a whole ass thing. It's a whole ass thing. (laughs) It's a whole ass thing. (laughs) I love it. Um, I, I so you you mentioned you did a, an event recently where you're going you were going to be uh, you know kind of talking about what you you know taking some trucks out to some kids and uh, and and uh, so tell us about this past weekend and, and what you did. So I met this lady that she stopped by my work and she runs a camp for special needs children. As soon as she told me that, it snapped in my head. Hey, I need to get some friends together. We'll take a a bunch of RC cars and trucks out there and let the kids have a good time. So I started explaining a little bit about what it is and everything and told her, you know, this is no cost to you at all, like nothing. We'll bring everything. We'll bring everything. If something breaks, don't worry about paying to fix it. We'll take it home and fix it ourselves. You know what I mean? It's just something that, I want to do with my friends as a group that we can give back to the local community. I love that. And these kids have a good time playing with some RC trucks. Yeah, make you know, sure she you had explained. That. She had explained about you know that like the sheriff's department comes out there with the training dogs and the fire department and stuff like that come out and the kids really have a great time and enjoy it. So she's like, I think they would really enjoy this, and so it was absolutely something that I'm down with. I'm a full then, grown adult and I would enjoy if somebody just showed up at my office and like did that. I would be like, this is the greatest day. Right. Let what? us drive our cars around. I mean, <laughs> set up a track. <laughs> young or old. I mean, it doesn't matter. Young, old, everything in between everybody. You can get out there and have fun. And with mm-hmm. these ones, because they're hobby grade, it is a little bit more expensive to get in. Like entry level, say on like a rock crawler truck, like what we use, you're looking at about 400 or so dollars. But the thing is, if something breaks, you can buy replacement parts. Yeah. The ones you get at Walmart, the toy stores, they break, that's it. They're done. You throw them away. You can't buy replacement parts. These, yeah. I've got some that are 30 plus years old. Wow. And all I got to do is put electronics in them and I can run them up and down the street all day. What? So that's pretty cool. It's not like you really, it's a little expensive to start, but then, you know what I mean? Like I said, you can fix it. You can upgrade it. You can change bodies. You can change rims and tires. Um, It's good for parents because you can get it for your kid and use it as motivation to get good grades. Hey, you get good grades in your report card. We'll buy a new body for your RC truck. Or, you know, it doesn't have to be Mm -hmm. a truck. It can be a car, boats. There's helicopters, planes, motorcycles, jet skis. I mean, there's the just about anything in the one-to-one world there's an rc of it that's really cool. so there's conventions for this then i i take it there's aftermarket conventions. well they have that's kind of they have like um their vendor only shows though they're not open to the public but where they showcase a lot of the new products coming out 
new designs on different things. And there's a guy that I follow on YouTube, Harley Designs. He'll go there because he works for a RC manufacturer here okay. in the United States in California. And so he'll go to the show and film some new stuff and then post it on his site or on YouTube. So you get a sneak peek of kind of what's coming out. And then he does a show every Tuesday called Scale News Update, where he just talks about new stuff in the RC world from the past week. Oh, so, so he keeps pretty, everybody informed. Yep. Nice. Yep. Nice. That's pretty sweet. Got a, got a man on the inside. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I so, love this um, so much. I want now. I want an RC uh, version of my of my Forerunner right now. And, you know, <laughs> you but like, totally do that. but like with Queen Kitty logos all yeah, over. Yeah, we got to get the logos. It could be done. It could it. be done. What um, year okay, Forerunner so, is it? At twenty twenty one. Okay. Yep. I had a similar body style to that. I think it was the body style right before that RC truck for a while, but I got rid of it. And I also um, had a um, 91 Forerunner RC truck body too. So I'm a this, big Toyota guy. <laughs> is this your mom saying that your dad has gotten, gotten her into it also? Probably, yeah. Yes. So I got my dad for Father's Day a couple years ago. My brother and I bought all the pieces and built him his own crawler. So when he would come up here, he could go out to Arapica with us and go crawling. Uh huh. Well, then they came out with these drag cars, kind of like what they have on TV shows and stuff. And we bought my dad one of those for Christmas a couple of years ago. Well, then I had to get one, a drag car, because I was going to just race, him, race himself all day. So now I've got one so I that mean, when I go down there, I can bring it and we drag race up and down the road. And we were down there just a couple of weekends ago with them and having a blast. So I'm time. never coordinated with the remote controls enough. Mm -hmm. I can't. I can't yeah, control are there courses car. on that, on how to do the remote, or is there, I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's I'm a not kind of like a hands-on, just you you get practice. one, you start playing with it, and, you know. Yeah, you I crash them out. every it's time. It's like a video game recorder, you know, or a video game controller. Same principle. I guess that's you also just... another thing, you know, dexterity, you know, getting yeah. hand-eye coordination oh, of yeah. uh, being able to control, see what the car is doing, knowing what your hands are doing. Um, yeah, you get to where you don't look at the remote anymore. Oh, yes. Watch the truck. Can you? Um, so. Thank you, Michelle. I was just going to say, Michelle, are you into this? Um, but can you uh, show us some of your work, uh, some of the things you have on your in your workshop going on right now? Um, and uh, follow at Lil Bobby Customs with the underscore in between those words. Um, we'll post it or here. I can comment it in here. Um, Cause yeah, some awesome. I was scrolling through and, and looking at some things you were doing. So I'll try to take my phone. I don't know exactly how good a shot I'll get, but I'll get a shot of the scale garage. She's and then I'll, no. I'll show a little sneak peek of my USTE build for next month. Sweet. Not the whole garage, just the scale garage. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Michelle's cracking me up in the comments. Uh, oh, okay. So this is your scale garage. This freaking awesome oh oh yeah Irwin. i just saw we got steve noticed. Irwin. so this little green truck here is 124th scale so it's even smaller than the regular ones you got my dog okay. chiefest's favorite toy to squeaky chewbacca of course you got some stuff down here you know some stuff you got to have in the garage for a little party you got a scale little tv and of course little bobby little bobby more rims and tires and that's basically Little Bobby Customs. Um, can, can you go back on that? So yeah. you said that truck is smaller scale? Than yes. So that one is 124th scale. Okay. So it's roughly fits in the palm of your hand. You know, is from fingertip to the base of your hand. Um, and what's the biggest that you do? What's the biggest? The biggest like ones that I've ever been into is 1 8th scale. Which it was a off-road buggy, and it was actually powered by nitro fuel, like what they use for drag cars and stuff like that. That's the, crazy. Yeah, they um, they've kind of they're not as popular anymore because the prices of gas and everything, of because course. that fuel is expensive. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um. So Michelle just walked out in the garage. So now most everything is going to electric because it's a lot better you can get way better battery packs you get longer run times 
so it's really it's really evolved with the electronics and everything so now it's made it easier for you to and it's less maintenance and maintaining and fiddling with i've gone through the, the gas cars and they're just not really worth it anymore oh they sound like a blast though time and place oh, yeah. right time and place <laughs> Um, did Michelle dad's, come to do her comedy routine? Yeah, she told me to come out. I have to. She's like, you got. She's like, no, I mean, show one of your trucks. I was like, I was yes, getting ready to, and then giving, she came out. She's out giving instruction. She's like, listen, listen. This is what we want to see. This is what you got to do. That's what. That's what I'm talking about. See? Wow. Okay, so that's bigger than uh, I was thinking. Even so, even that's I one said, thing. Um, what size is that? So that's one tenth scale. Okay. I completely okay. painted the inside of this body myself. I masked off the hood area. I don't, can you see that? Yes, we can. Yeah. So I have an engine, which is back here, this little blue one. That's going to be underneath there. So when I'm driving this thing around, you're going to see that little engine bay. I painted the rear bed cage with a, it's called an antique metallic uh, brass. Instead of it just being black, I wanted something just different and something that's my own. And then these blue rims here are going on the truck. And the rings on the outer edge of it, I painted with the same color as the cage. Nice. So I've got probably, and this is a more basic paint job. It's not like it's a bunch of different colors or there's any kind of stencils that I've laid down and sprayed multiple colors, anything like that. This It's real basic, but it's the color. When this thing is in the sun, it shines like a diamond. And this blue, I laid down a clear pearl first. Ooh. Then I laid down the blue, metallic blue. And in the sun, it just, it's, and with the gold rear cage, it's what I drink. <laughs> I love cool. that. You'll have to. Are you gonna get that on up on your on your page and uh, kind of show when some it's of that done. reflection when it's done? All right, sweet. Well, we'll yeah, look forward said, to that. That's and, my personal uh, build. I've been trying to get customer builds done so that I can get those out of the shop and focus. So on you it. do this. You do builds for others uh, as okay. Yeah, they're like I said. They're local people. They're friends of mine, and okay. they're like, hey, I want a nice truck, or hey, can you paint this body for me, or Hey, can you fix this? Sometimes it's just a matter of fixing somebody's truck for them. So you're the local mechanic. Yeah, I mean, and I've been a, I was a mechanic working on Mini Coopers for a while too. So I've done I've done a lot of different jobs, everything from residential air conditioning to working on cars to building small engines and working on small like lawn mowers and stuff like that. To now I spray be... lawns and fertilize lawns and plants and stuff like that. You're going to be very useful in the apocalypse, I'm just going to say. I don't know everything about everything, but I know a little bit about a lot. Same, so, same, same. You know what I mean? I don't know yes. everything, but there's a lot of things I know, and sometimes I don't even realize I, I know it. I just there it I is. watch things, and I figure things out by watching it done. So... Like all figure of my, it out, and, it you know that's your your engineering, you know you're doing your own engineering and and uh, and and tinkering, I guess is what I love to call it. Yeah, you know, just oh yeah, yeah, definitely works or it doesn't work or <laughs> if like I said, if I break something, I fix it. I don't give it to somebody else to fix for me. Where did I put my blunt? Because <laughs> you're I'll the person get. that everybody takes stuff to to fix for them. You know, we've got. The, there's me and two other guys in our local crew that are pretty much the fix it guys for everybody or everybody goes to, but then everybody's kind of y'all are in a gang. They all not a gang, but like a, a crew? our local crew. crew. You know what I'm saying? That's like our what local, our local, <laughs> you know what I mean? We got our local, we're That's like the Arapika cool OGs. Hard. You know what I mean? You guys we're got the ones that've been going there the longest. <laughs> you know what I mean? You guys got jackets? Because that would be even cooler. No, but you know, a you couple of jackets. us have made like so I made the little Bobby Customs t shirts. I love your shirts, yeah. Um another friend of ours mm -hmm. lifted and gifted RC. He made his own shirts and everybody wears them. Nice. Um, nice. So it, I like that. It, you guys definitely monetize on this for sure. Yeah. I mean we're here. We yeah. sell the shirts yeah, to yeah, each other. 
<laughs> they basically the money all stays within our group anyway. So, so what? That's, that's where it starts. Buying and trading yeah. RC parts or trucks. So that's where it starts. And then know. some outsider's gonna be like, "Where can I get one of them shirts?" And also, no, I'm in real there. picky about who can... wears my shirts, man. Okay, I, also I like that say, exclusivity. <laughs> well, I'll say, you know, watching you guys show, club. watching you're a club. You know, Queen Kitty Seltzer, pop that kitty and put it in your mouth. How you guys have grown that and, you know, you're keeping at it and, and trying to make it more and more and better and better. That's kind of what's kind of pushed me, like, to do the shirts. You know, we had, there was one time we were talking about the shirts about um, the donkey and the giraffe. You remember that with Ride That Ass? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just saying, we we need, need to do a collaboration on a shirt like that. I'm just Absolutely. We would love to. Heck yeah, let's talk. I, I yeah, yeah. Then, um, she does all together. of our artwork. Yeah. Can... <laughs> but then also, I need you guys to down. send me your shirt size and color preference so I can guys get you guys little Bobby Custom shirts made up and sent out. Listen, not pink. Wait, I was gonna say hey, I, I want to. I was like, I want a Queen Kitty sponsorship in that in your garage. There, we can uh, talk hey, about that. I will. <laughs> when I'm getting ready to build, I have plans. I'm not getting ready, but I have plans to build a bigger little Bobby custom shop on the other side of my I love it. garage. Do it. But it's it. gonna be way bigger, and it's more so gonna be like when I'm doing pictures with him. Because I don't want to get it all dirtied up. Like my workshop now, I painted it white so I'd be able to see better. Because, you know, being older, you can't really see too good. So I'll drop these little tiny screws and I, I can't see them for nothing. So I painted it all white and then I've got a pretty bright light above so that I can see it. But it gets dirty from me, the trucks. So I want this garage to be like more of like a show garage. So when I take yeah. pictures of the trucks that I do... Little Bobby mm -hmm. working on the trucks. I'll pose him up and they bring it back over here and work mm -hmm. on it. Um, yeah. I've got 3D printed cinder blocks. So like real size cinder blocks, but scaled down and 3D printed of all different colors. And I'm going to do like a show wall. So when I put the truck there, this you got this brick wall, multicolored brick wall behind it as like a backdrop. I love it. So, That's awesome. I love it. Um, do you have a 3D printer? Do you print your own? My stuff brother up? does. Yeah, okay. my brother does, and then a couple Good. of my friends, my normal friends, do too. And um, your normal they're always friends? for 3D printing. Huh? <laughs> normal friends. I would. Well, my like my, friends have 3D printers. So. <laughs> Daryl Daryl is using our YouTube comments as a as a dating app, and I mean, if you're single, hit him up. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good old dude, man. He's a good old guy. Uh, he's been very active in the comments and we super appreciate that. Yeah, we love it. Thanks for cool, joining that's us, good. I'm glad yeah, all of you that are active in the comments. Um, <laughs> Owen is active in the comments, lifting and gifted. Chris, yeah. uh, Daryl, um, Cotton, Ball Cotton Ball Day. Day. Oh, Cotton Dick. Yeah, Cotton Ball Day. He's a good guy. We were up um, at his place on Sunday doing a, um, he had an event for, it's called Operation 11 Charlie. And they... <laughs> do things for veterans basically and they were trying we were raising money to send vets to the scale truck challenge thing next month oh that's cool so um my friend russell over at lifted and gifted rc he three printed 3d printed a bunch of stuff and donated my brother did um <laughs> i donated a custom painted body that i did so um and then we had some other people that are more sponsored and hooked up with different manufacturers so they were able to get some better stuff too to raffle off and uh, we had a good turnout uh cotton put down a man this guy did smoked pork butts on the smoker freaking amazing like and i don't normally eat a whole lot of that kind of stuff but this guy hands down man he could smoke some damn meat that's awesome um, I don't know if we saw the if you saw this earlier or if this is something you, you discussed, but um, that's, that's what of the, cotton ball is this. Yeah, this is what you're talking about, right? Yeah. Um, or is it something for moving forward? Uh, any, no, that's yeah. something that's we just did this this past Sunday yesterday. Oh, so you okay? Cool. That's but really then cool. I've also um, got a number for somebody that runs a veterans group up here in Brooksville little north of us that i'm trying to get in hold of and try to do my own he's in florida veterans day. by the way everybody just so that way we can just have some veterans that are interested maybe their family members or friends that want to come out and just play some toy trucks yeah they don't got to do anything but show up we'll have the trucks 
batteries charged, ready to go. If something breaks, don't worry about it. We'll pull out another truck and keep on riding. Nice. Um, Brooks in Brooksville? In uh, yeah, Florida. Yeah, the, the, it's called nice. Veterans Heat Factory. Just in case everybody was wondering where that is, it's in Florida. Um, and that's that's where you do this. But this is a national thing. So, like, there's lots yeah, of... Yeah, there's people all over the world that, that are into these, ti- these they call them tiny trucks. But into these can RC just, trucks. Can yes, you can Google, Google it. Okay. Go on YouTube and put in RC Rock Crawler, and you're going to get a bajillion videos. And sometimes they look so realistic in the way that the people that are really, some of these guys on YouTube are really good at their video and editing and everything. And there's times the truck looks real. You don't know that it's a fake truck, that it's just a toy. You know what I mean? It looks that realistic through the video too. But like I said, it's, it's pretty amazing how scale and how realistic people are making them look. I mean, my skills are nothing compared to what's going to be at this show next month, but I wanted to go for myself. I'd never been. And now having little Bobby customs, I wanted to build my own truck. That's my paint job. That's my ideas so that I'm not taking somebody else's truck. You know what I mean? I want it to be mine and just see the comments I get from people and see how it does in the show and shine. Like, Oh, you you got to keep us updated on that. I want. Oh yeah, I'm gonna do my best to take video and pictures, do some Instagram reels. You know what I mean? Like I said, it's it means a lot to me because I put a lot of time into building this truck. Not only that, but then I built two customer trucks in the process. Yeah, and I still have one more truck to try to build by like February 16th. I gotta have it done. So it's I don't know if it's gonna happen. I may just have the one truck, but this one truck is really the, my showpiece anyways. The other truck was just to pull a trailer to put this truck on and show it off. Oh, see, look. So um, either I, way, though, my main truck will be there. Um, so you guys go follow Lil Bobby Customs on Instagram to learn more about what he's doing and what likes. He posts a lot of pictures and stuff about uh about the tiny trucks about the crawling so you can go check it out over there and if you've never seen it before you don't know much about it you can kind of get a glimpse um this has been fun yeah definitely thank you thank you (laughs) um we're not quite at our hour yet but as you know we still have a couple a little bit of show left but um i uh want to pause here for a second and remind everybody that this show is brought to you by pop this queen kitty seltzer um, pop this kitty, put it in your mouth. This is a low <laughs> dose CBD seltzer. We have bubblegum burst, lemon kiss, and nearly naked. Um, low dose CBD seltzer, no yak in the back. So that little flavor that you get after you drink or consume um, cannabis or hemp products, it's not going to be there in this. This is a nice and refreshing water. We don't use any sugar or any sweeteners. Um, Our flavors are sourced from botanical terpenes and our hemp is organically sourced. And you can follow us on our web, on our website and on our social media uh, Queen Kitty Seltzer, www.queenkittyseltzer.com, or you can check out our solo link, solo.to slash Queen Kitty Seltzer. That has all of our links attached to it, so you can check us out. It's really refreshing. You can order your own, or you can order some of our merch as well. Um, so check us out, Queen Kitty Seltzer. This show is also um, brought to you by CQ LLC. We are a cannabis education company who are um, certified to teach responsible vendor training. So if you know anybody in your company that needs responsible vendor training, if you're an individual that wants to have it on your resume, um, give us a call, 970-426-5985. Right now we have a virtual option, but if um, you are just a little bit patient with us in Colorado, we are going to actually, we're working on putting an event together so that we can um, maybe do a job fair and also get you certified for responsible vendor training in Colorado. Um, and and then as always, this is the Cannabis Closet Podcast with Can of Queen and MJ, solo.to slash Cannabis Closet 420 to follow all of our social media links um, and get in touch with us. You can also come hang out with us in our Discord and that link is in that solo as well. So solo.to slash Cannabis Closet 420 f- to uh, find everything you need about the Cannabis Closet. Um, this is- with us. <laughs> 
Hang yeah, come sesh with us. We do it. Uh, we do it after the show. Sometimes we get on uh, with a group and we just we smoke it up. Smoke, smoke, smoke. Um, we appreciate you being here to um, support Little Bobby Customs, and um, that's why we wanted to have you on because um, because we wanted to support what you were doing. We were super thank excited you, thank to you, thank see you. the progress that you've been making since, like you told us about it. Um, like I said, a lot of it is from watching you guys show and the inspiration that I've gotten from you guys has kind of made me, like I said, made me do the shirts. I've got stickers that I get done. You know what I mean? It makes me want to just do more with this and through this, do more for the community. You know what I mean? I just it. try to do things, events for the community and just give back. Like yes. I said, you know what I mean? So, Absolutely. So I, I thank you guys. Yeah, like I, said, I thank you for bringing me on the show. It was awesome. Like I said, I'm, thank you to my friends at all, you know, got in the comments. I appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? It means well, a lot. We, we do have one more question for you and for the audience, for of course. Of course. Uh -huh. for Oh uh, yeah, I'm ready. Um, we have a few on here. So, um, but the one I chose for today uh, is: Would you rather have super sensitive taste or super sensitive hearing? Would you rather have super sensitive taste or super sensitive hearing? Like you super hear... sensitive taste because I may not want to hear what people are saying. <laughs> That's what I was thinking too. Same, same, same. I'm not like, even that. Is I just don't want to hear everything. I don't want like my. It's, mm. My only problem with super <laughs> sensitive taste is that literally you might be actually able to like taste the essence of somebody just from Ooh. them being in front of you because your taste buds are so sensitive. Oh, gross. That, that, yeah, we're growing all that's, dudes, man. That's just a that not gonna be hold a your nose taste. And, and cover your mouth situation, <laughs> you know. Just like no, that's kind of like a on like respirator and suit and stuff, man. It's like charging right. filters and mm -mm -mm. yeah. I like it. I work yeah. around a bunch Sorry. of dudes. We all work outside all day and get sweaty in the summer. Uh uh. No, I don't want to take that. I think I'll take this super sensitive hearing. Thank you. But then, but then, <laughs> but then you know, I'm going to twist this up because I'm going to always play the devil's advocate. So we were recently in a place where somebody was talking extremely loudly, like for no reason mm. at all, like not a reason to do it. And that really made my, I wanted to rip my ears off. I did. I was like, I can't, you gotta, why are yeah. you yelling? So they have a high pitched voice, it's even worse. Uh, I like know that high pitched sound sometimes, man, it just tears my ears up. I know, and it wasn't like <laughs> and my wife gives me crap about it too, about music and stuff. But, it has um, to be see, okay. Like so said, you it's high pitched sound. Mariah Carey. No, she don't listen to that kind of crap. <laughs> she has way better music taste than that. I, I'm I've I've been canceling Mariah Carey since I was young. But anyways, um, <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's the thing is I think I would go with taste and just be very careful about the people that I let into my space because yeah, I feel like your taste buds, if they're super, super sensitive, you might be able to taste somebody's breath and that's not okay. I'd be um, like, Hey, we got to have like about a five foot perimeter around me. You can't. Mm -mm, yeah. Mm -mm, can we like an inside either, bubble? Either Unless that. I already know how you smell. You ain't coming in. Um, oh either. yeah. Like that bubble, like one of those like boy in a bubble right. type bubble thing right. you can't come you gotta unzip place. it so they can get in with you, you yeah know? right like like just a, a space mm -mm. helmet space helmet nope i smell something mm -mm. Nope. no you gotta go <laughs> like we would have to either um stay very far apart from like from somebody like that or we would have to have a real heart to heart like listen i don't want to be rude <laughs> or nothing okay but i can taste your breath <laughs> 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 well, remember when I you were talking about the guy that thought it was gay to wipe and clean his butt? Yes, I do. I mean, just imagine, that. imagine that if that chick that was with him had super sensitive Ooh. taste. No, that no. would be that would be horrible, man. The like, chick that yeah. was with him was already dealing with like. <laughs> <laughs> Did yeah. she have to go to the bathroom and throw up? I would have. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, I would have too. Maybe, I maybe have not definitely. even made it to the bathroom. Like yeah. mm -mm. Mm -mm. I you... um I feel rude all the time because Michelle said COVID six foot rule. I 
am of the six foot rule. I like this rule. Um, I use this rule in stoner settings a lot because we share a lot of stuff and um, maybe we shouldn't <laughs> like maybe especially during especially during high virus months like when you know that people's immune systems are a little bit more weak and viruses are being shared amongst the community um not on purpose uh maybe you should suspend oh it is 420 on the west coast on the west coast oh 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 <coughs> everybody light them up if you got them um roll it up, light it up. happy 420 west coast but like yeah like what was i saying before that happened i lost my train of thought <laughs> i think we all probably it's okay it wasn't that important we heard um, 420 oh, 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 share. oh stop sharing stop sharing your <laughs> yeah, joint you during high stop virus sharing. seasons like during cold and flu and now covid season it really is a thing Viruses are more, uh, you're more susceptible to them during certain times of year or they're more, there's, there's more people with like lower immunity or whatever the case may be. So like, just roll your own, bring well, your own you bowl, stay like with safe. alcohol, stay burn, safe, burn the tip, get one of those things that you can like put over your thing. It kind of looks a little bit like anyways, like a, like a no, cigarette holder almost like a cigarette tip. Yeah, I have, have the new like one that. cigarette tips. Yeah. Well, I have this thing. I seen it years ago at work, but it's, you know, you got the chain that hangs from your ceiling fan that you pull on to turn it through the th the speeds and shut it yeah. off. Well, on the end, you know, you usually got like some kind of little decorative thing on there. Well, I found one one time at the, um, the damn hardware store that looked pretty cool. So I was like, holy shit, the end of it's like perfect size for a blunt. So I started using that. And everybody that comes over and smokes, they're like, what is this? I'm like, it came from a fucking ceiling fan. <laughs> awesome. Sharing is caring, but you could like just maybe roll two blunts but, or smoke two bowls or like. Well, what I was thinking is just just break that blunt in half. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. like cut it That way we both can enjoy it together. We can both smoke together and enjoy smoking and hanging out. Yeah, you know, create nice two. <laughs> smoke with somebody else sometimes. And um, then you um, can Just be careful out there because. So. Being sick sucks and um, giving it to other people also sucks. So, um, you know, I don't think anybody does that intentionally or maliciously or anything. No. I just think that we're, we're, so I use the COVID rule. I'm like, nah, COVID, like, especially if it's a stranger, okay. like I, oh, no, I, I, I definitely stranger, share. Man. We definitely share. Me and MJ definitely share. Um, yeah, you guys and, are more like family. Now. <laughs> right, You're right, right. Like She's stranger. in my bubble, right? She's in my cute. <laughs> But, um, but like, there's only a few people I'll share with, but if I don't know, you know, you like, if I don't know you, we can't, well, I don't want to share because also like, I don't, I don't know what, what you're doing with your mouth. I'm not going <laughs> to <laughs> Oh yeah. Is this where we're going to start getting Ooh. uncomfortable? <laughs> yeah, you know. Is this the uncomfortable corner? <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's good. some funny stuff it's when you guys get into the uncomfortable talk. <laughs> I was about to ask, but what about when you're ready to kiss people? <laughs> like, yeah. I'll just kiss you. <laughs> I know. Oops, I, I burp. Kiss everybody. I yeah, after kiss every time everybody. I burp, you know, I can't help it. <laughs> that was a good one. That was a good one. So this every is time you do the would you rather, I go after I'm done, after the show's over, I go and tell my wife about them. But should she get to hear it today? Uh, I don't know if she's still watching or not. Oh, well, um, so I think I like that other one too. The next oh, one. would you rather never be able to drink water again or only be able to drink water? No, no I can't drink only water, man. I can't do it. I don't, the thing is, is that you, wouldn't you die if you never drink? I guess you'd have to like increase your vegetables and fruits, but. Well, wait a minute. Water. Didn't you say you could only drink water? Only water oh, you said or never, never again. Oh, yeah, never, never again. water okay. again. Or only okay. be able oh. to drink water. I guess you could drink coconut water. 
Yeah, but I mean, like, there's stuff that's made with that has water. Everything in it. is made with water. <laughs> I mean, even though it's got a bunch it's of sugar, yeah, chemicals it's an impossible or whatever, it's still question. Water, so kind of. Did y'all yeah. know when I was young? I don't know if y'all remember this. Y'all will re maybe remember this, but when we were younger, there were always these like weird shows on, and there were like these weird people on that were like allergic to like every day. Like there were people who were allergic to water. Uh, yes, there is. There is, I think, a real thing called. Yes, I remember though that. But also, it is a real thing to be allergic to water. But I mean, it's kind of severe. Like mm -hmm. it's not just an excuse. Like uh, yeah, I jokingly, I'm sure my sister would be like, "I'm allergic to water." Um, no, but it's but, a real but, thing. No, yeah, I could they, probably they say like, that too. They like. They like can't consume water. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know. Uh, and then it's like, so how what do you, do you drink it, at that point? I guess Gatorade. I don't know. How does it? What? How does that work? If if you can't drink water, or like, they just IV you? Like, how do you get hydrated? How? Because your body is made up of water. <laughs> like, I mean, and like, a, a, it's a uh, uh, yes, it's a real thing. So, so you um, would be literally allergic to yourself. Yes. Yes. Sort of. I mean. <laughs> yes it's almost yes it's like i don't know i like the can i i'm gonna read the next the last one um mm. would you rather re-roll your stats which are intelligence strength constitution etc knowing that they could come out much worse or much better or just stay the same as you are now stay the same Oh, this is a self-love question, you guys. <laughs> I have, I I'm not gambling on dice, man. Uh-uh. Exactly. I'm like, I'm not a I'm big like, gambler. I, I, I'm not. Mm -mm. I, yeah, I'm pretty. It's a 50-50 shot if whether or not you get worse or better. Yeah, but I don't want to bet on that worse. I know yeah, where I'm at no. now. I know where I'm at for now, and I'm pretty. I feel I'm pretty good and pretty lucky. At some point, I guess. I got lucky with my intelligence Michelle, and stuff. <laughs> Michelle said, fuck you. She's tossing the dice. She didn't say fuck you. I added that part. She <laughs> said she's tossing the dice. <laughs> no, I'll stick with what I got, man. Because like I said, I don't want to be worse off. <clears throat> I've seen worse off, and I don't want no part of that. Man. I've been worse off, so, so. I know I don't want to no, know. I would. I, would, I, think I don't want to go backwards, basically. Right. I think I'm progressing rather nicely. I, yeah, I'm I would crazy. say yeah. you would have to put me in the very rock bottom of my life for me to be like, let's give it a shot. <laughs> How much worse could it get? <laughs> I can remember some times where I probably would have said, yeah, let's just go yeah, ahead and roll these dice for again. Sure. Man. For sure. For sure. But, for sure. Ask, me, but, yeah, ask me that on a different day. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. ask me that tomorrow and the answer could be different, though. That's, you know. But today, today so, we stay the today. same. Today we love our. <laughs> we are all happy. Yes. Yep. Yep. Yes. I'm, I'm good. Um, I'm good. Because <laughs> if I couldn't, didn't have the talent to do what I do now, I don't know. I, I don't know what the hell I do. I feel that way. You know? I feel that way. I'm like, if I don't do this thing that I'm like really pushing to make sure that I do correctly, what else am I gonna do? Well, if it messes with you know, if it and changes your intelligence then, you know, that's probably going to change the way you think. You know what I mean? As far as... She said, I'm, going I'm not to... saying everybody, but, you know... Your wife's that... a fucking comedian, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's probably busting my stones. She's my beautiful queen, though. I wouldn't oh. train her for a thing in the world. Not even a Honda or an RC car. Y'all oh, have been together God. forever since, like, since... How long have y'all been together so like, I've you've known been her in since, my life for I feel like since she was in middle years. school, she was, was probably since, thirteen or so, something like that. Teenager. When we yep, first I met at like... Brandon Skateland of all places, <laughs> uh, not I'm sure you remember that place. Nineteen ninety three. Ninety three is when we, I had you know back in our day we had the little black book, and you know you wrote girls' names, your friends' names, and stuff in there. I'm familiar. And I numbers. Think I made one of those in high school. Yes. Well, well, you're talking about beginning of high school here. I'm talking so, about in high school. They <laughs> didn't see all of this. <laughs> but 
So I was going through, and if I didn't get a hold of somebody or phone was disconnected, I'd white out the number because you remember they used to have that stuff called white out. <laughs> they yep. still sell it. Still have it. Yep. It's yeah, but who the hell writes it. anything anymore? Shit. We Everybody do. is all texty and on the computer and the laptop not and this, iPad. And, not this middle-aged well, woman. Not all of us. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but some of us still use these writing apparatus. But um, I just happened to get a hold of her stepmom, and she's like, she's been trying to find you for like, like last year and a half. She's like, you know, she's at her dad's, whatever, or she's at her mom's, but, you know, here's her number. She has her own line. You know, give her a call like Sunday. You had your so own did. line in yeah, 1993. Oh, my sister had bougie. her own line. Oh, Rich my bitches. sister had her own line because Rich my bitches. parents were like, we can't get phone calls through because my sister was always on the phone. <laughs> always. That phone was like attached to she. She was the core. She got a cordless because she was that this girl. Is, uh, oh, just, yeah. I this remember is, the days of cordless phones, right? <laughs> hey, too long, didn't read. We this is the, your wife's response is a too long, didn't read. She's like, <laughs> this is the story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We first met at Brandon Skateland, and there's and a story behind that too, but I'm not getting time. into that one in front of a lot of people. <laughs> there's a That's story right. behind that. That's what that the Discord is for. That's what the Discord, That's is, for. That's what the Discord is for. <laughs> but We've been together since 93. So this year, June, July 20th will be 30 years that we've been together. May 1st of this year will be 24 years we've been married. Wow. So Look all through high school, we were together. I even changed schools to go to her school. And she already knew people there. So Listen, like, if, if Michelle I slept was... in class, she knew about it. She was like, hey, you were sleeping in third period. I was like, yeah, but my work was done, I swear. <laughs> so she had people snipe, you know. Roll that dice. She's been in line. <laughs> but I will say, if if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be the man I am today. Listen, if your so. wife is not already doing stand up, uh, like open mics, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna need uh I'm gonna need her to go do that because there's some talent there. She needs uh, to start watching the show more and getting in the comments. Uh, she's hilarious. Yeah. We love her. <laughs> we yeah, she's like said, she's my beautiful queen. She's amazing. My favorite cousin. She puts up with all my stuff, <laughs> with my RC habits and my Honda stuff and my just in it. general stuff. So I love the support. I have a support system su as such too. Yeah. I have a support system as such too, and I and I and I couldn't be happier about it. Um, oh yeah, definitely. definitely. Y'all have been fantastic in the comments. This has been an amazing show. I feel like I learned something today. It's really cool. Was awesome. This was fun. Um, yeah, definitely. Definitely. We learned also, well, I've learned a couple things. I learned about a little bit about crawling and RC cars, but I also learned that your wife is a comedian. I'm not kidding. <laughs> um, she's making me laugh and that's not always easy to do. Um, yeah, so. she, she brightens my day. So. I love it. Um, so Michelle, that that's your next career point. You're going to go be a stand up comedian. Tell them I sent you. <laughs> they don't, they don't know who the fuck I am. It doesn't matter. Um, she'll still say it. Hey, there's a whole thing you can, she got a whole segment on. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. All she's got to do is just, you know, look back on our life and she's got plenty of material. Yeah. Same. Uh, I feel the same way. It's, I, I'm it's, sure I've given her a lot of amusing times. I imagine comedy, you have. Comedy, you know. comedy is I'm like a, too. I'm like a clown, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm here to amuse her. Who's ready? I think I think men are here for our amusement for sure, so. Look, I find amusement in everybody. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not discriminative with my amusement. I find everybody funny. You, you know, everybody's got some kind of little thing. Like, you know, you, some people, like, you look at them when they're eating. You know, you kind of do it side-eyed so they don't watch, think you're staring at them. But you just watch people, people eat sometimes, and it's funny. It's just the way their their face moves or their lips move. It, people are sorry, hilarious. People it's are funny. hilarious in general. That's true. Yes, humans are hilarious. You got to um, find the humor in life, you know what I mean? This is, your your friends are roasting you in the comments, so I encourage you to. Oh, that's Okay. <laughs> I'll pay him um, back on Sunday at Air Pika. 
Oh man. Well, uh, are there any uh, events? So you have a Sunday event. You want to holler about that? No, it's just our normal Sunday. Sunday is our normal day to go for crawler therapy. You know what I mean? That, like okay. that's what it's become. It's become Sunday crawler therapy, Arapika. You know what I mean? The local people will always be out there. You know that really that's the Arapika OGs. You know what I mean? Yeah. The people that have been coming out there the longest. They come out there every weekend. Some people drive from an hour away every weekend and an hour back, you know, not just there and back, but one way. So the two hour drive to come out and play tiny trucks and, and just have a good time with everybody. And like I said, everybody just is chill. Everybody has a good time. And, you know, I mean, we accept everybody. Sounds like Except Daryl. Except Daryl. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You guys, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for being in the comment section um, as you are. Um, we are just a little over time um, for a Monday show, but it's been so great and enjoyable that we just didn't want to stop. Um, we do not have a full Wednesday show. We might jump on for a blip to... Um, do a little smoke a smoke with you, but we are traveling. Um, we're going to be at Snowdown this week. If you're in Durango, um, come find us. We're definitely doing a pop up. Um, and yeah, you guys, be nice to yourself. Put your mask on before assisting others. Yeah, cultivate love. Bring it to you. You deserve it. And as um, always, stay lifted, y'all. Stay, stay, stay lifted and gifted. Stay lifted and gifted. There it is. This is a new woo-woo. <laughs>because okay hell yeah all right good that's what we nice just want to make yeah, sure that yeah. it was coming through that was a great one oh, man that's, that's, one. Uh, that's her happy i'm happy um i'm you know ready to eat ready to go outside or um <laughs> just just happy you so know, fantastic that's... that was a good one all right you guys <laughs> we'll see you we might come through on wednesday just check your notifications make sure you like follow share tell all of your friends about us and um stay lifted like we said we'll see you next time thanks for joining us derek little bobby customs check him You're out welcome thank, thank you for you having so me much. thank you i appreciate yes. it appreciate it love love Mwah. good night everybody oh join us in discord if you want